message from the mountain. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about being ashamed. What is ashamed? And, and what do we have to be ashamed about? Uh, first, we're going to read from uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 36 through 48. And it's about the lady that, uh, that came to Jesus' feet. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat, Jesus to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears, and wiped him with her hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him in saw this, he spoke to himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he, sa so he said, Teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who gave him more was forgiven more. And he said to him, You have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. This lady came into a house of a Pharisee. The Pharisee was a very, very well, usually a well-to-do, high in the religion, religious realm. Uh, they were very, very well known. But she, a sinner, a known sinner, came into this house. She was not ashamed to come right in and come to Jesus' feet and cry and wipe his feet and anoint it with, and kiss him and anoint him with oil. She was not ashamed. Why should we be ashamed? Adam and Eve in the, in the garden, they were ashamed. They, in Genesis 3, 8... Chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard, my voice, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Uh, chapter 2 and 25. And they both were naked, the man and his wife, and we're not ashamed. See, when, when, before, when they hadn't sinned, they weren't ashamed. But when they had sinned, they hid themselves because they were ashamed of what they had done. Well, when you, you accept Jesus Christ, you don't have to be ashamed anymore. You can leave that shame. We all fall short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. We're all born sinners. Our ship sunk a long time ago when, when, when we were in bondage to Satan. Jesus saves lives. He's in the saving business. As we go to, let's go to uh, Matthew. Oh, oh, excuse me. Yes, Matthew. Chapter 14, in verse 25. 
And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them and walked on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind bolstering, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thee of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? We're all sinking in this, life of, this sea of life. All we have to do is to call out, Lord, save me. That's all we have to say. Lord, save me. Forgive me of my sins. And it says immediately, he stretched forth his hand and saved him and pulled him out of the water. You know, we're all sinking. If, if, they've been a, if, they, if the ship had sunk and we were all out in the water, and a lifeboat come all around and said, accept Jesus Christ and you can get in this boat, would you? Or would you push the boat off and, continue, and, and wait for your demise? The lifeboats are here. They're coming around. Don't be ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Especially after you accept Jesus Christ. Why is it, you know, most Christians are still ashamed when they're in their infancy. We go to Walmart, we talk about, uh, you know, if people go to the ball games, they, they yell and shout for their team. Uh, they go to the store, they've just got a new car, and man, they can't wait to say, hey man, I got me a new car, y'all see my new car. But why can't people say, hey, I've accepted Jesus Christ, man, it's great. You ought to, you, you ought to accept him. You ought to feel the love that I feel and not be ashamed of Christ. When we're at church, we ought to stand up and shout and praise God and not be ashamed. We get ho uh, horsed at a ball game hollering for the other team, but in church we sit and be quiet, afraid somebody's going to see us shout. Why, why is it? Is it because everybody is shouting at the ball game we can shout too, to feel like part of the crowd? Or do we sit quietly because everybody's quiet in church so we feel like part of the crowd? Let the Lord move you. Don't be ashamed. We have nothing to be ashamed of. Jesus tells us in Mark 8 and 38, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Are we going to be ashamed of Christ that on that day, that glorious day when he finally comes and we stand before God, Christ will walk up and be ashamed of us. He will be ashamed because we were ashamed of him. Or are we going to tell people that we want them to love Christ as we do? Are we going to ask the cashier at Walmart, hey, you know, do you know Christ? The guy sitting beside us at a bus stop, doesn't matter where, doctor's office. Uh, I'm guilty of it. A lot of times I, I, I don't because it just, why is there such a barrier? Is Satan putting that barrier in our minds, making us think there's something wrong? That there's something wrong with us believing in Christ? Or is it just, this person is sinking. We climbed into the lifeboat. Have we, since we got in the lifeboat, did we forget about everybody else that was floating out there sinking and their demise coming? Or are we going to look at that person and ask them, hey, are you in the lifeboat? Do you need to be do you need to be hoisted up into this boat? 
Do you need Jesus Christ in your life that, that you can be saved, that you can help me pull these other people into the lifeboat? We need to think about these things. People are dying each and every day. Each and every day, people are dying and going to hell as we sit comfortable in our dry lifeboats. We need to be bent over the side of the boats. We need to be reaching out to those that's sinking, sinking in the in life sea. It breaks my heart. You know, uh, we uh, wrote, started writing down a list of people's names at church of lost people that we knew. I was going to make me a little bitty list, got a small piece of paper, and I started writing it down. And you know, it started really breaking my heart that when I got to 25 people. Then I got to 50. I thought, man, I know 50 people that's lost. And then I got to 75, 85, 100, and it didn't stop till about 185. Now that I'm ashamed of. That's what we need to be ashamed of. 185 people on a, on a list that shouldn't be, that's drowning, that's drowning, that's losing their lives, that I need to witness to and see those people come to Christ. 185. And that's nobody's fault but my own. We need to reach out and we need to witness to these people. We need to start moving. We need to start pulling them out of this sea. They're sinking fast. They're sinking fast. And we don't know which one's going to be next. So if we pull this one out, we don't know if that's going to be next or that one's going to be next. But we'll hurry up and get every one we can. And let's hope and pray that the ones on our list, the ones that we know, the ones we, we run across, that if we can pull them out, that they may not lose their lives. That they can be saved through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's, you know, we, we fail God in so many ways. We fail Him in so many ways. And it's our own faults. We need to read the Word more. And more than reading the Word, we need to pray more for these lost. We need to spend more time with God in His presence and ask Him for, for the will in their lives to be, that they would be changed, that they would do the will of God. Let's pray all together for one another, to strengthen one another, to do His will, that these can be saved. People are sinking. Don't be satisfied sitting back and floating in your boat. And if somebody gets up to get to the side boat, don't say, hey, don't rock the boat. We need to be rocking the boat. We need to be rocking that boat, pulling people in, and having them bend over the sides and pull people in. Time is running short. If, if, if Jesus tarries, still yet, their lives are clicking on. Their time is coming to an end. We don't know when it is. You go to the cemeteries, you see the gravestones, all the way from uh, dying in the womb, all the way to over 100 years old. There's graveyards full of every age. We need to be getting busy about seeing people saved. I'm ashamed of how I have failed God. But I'm going to try to do better. i got to do better. The Word tells me I can't be ashamed. If I'm ashamed of Him, He'll be ashamed of me.